Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Becca and I'm an elementary music teacher and over the past year I have like fallen in love with Google Slides. Okay, so today I'm going to give you lots and lots of Google Slides tips. These are not tips for how to create Google Slides, so if you're looking for that, I'll link some videos that I have down below about like how to make Google Slides. This is more about tips for using Google Slides. So specifically, we're going to talk about what works in present mode and what works in edit mode and how to figure out which one is better for your kiddos. We'll also talk about sharing settings when you are giving your activities to your kids. We'll talk about how to assign your lessons to your kids, whether you're using Google Classroom or if you're not using Google Classroom or a really easy way that I have found really recently that has like changed my life. It's game changer, y'all game changer. Um, we'll also talk about how to adjust your slides. So maybe if you have a slide and it's not like quite what you need, you need something a little bit different, how to do that. And we'll even talk about how to download your Google Slides presentation as a PowerPoint, if you're a PowerPoint fan or a PDF, if that's your jam or even images and just all the different things. If you are an elementary music teacher, definitely hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any future videos. And I will link a free Google Slides activity that I have down below so that you can test it out in case you just want to try some of these things out for yourself. So without further ado, we're going to hop right on in. All right, so we're gonna talk through a couple of different things that you can do with Google Slides. So number one, if you need to adjust things. Now, all of my products come with this slide at first that gives you a little information and some other products that you can use in your classroom. You can delete these and then use this slide for your students. But if you don't have that, you can always go through and again, delete stuff like that in order to add stuff for your students. Or one little hack that I like is you can add a shape over top of it. So if we just go like this, this is a bad example because it kind of goes around her. But then you can match the color and then add it that way. Now again, if I'd picked a different slide where it didn't have the question mark over there, that would work a whole lot better. So that is one thing that you can do. And then again, you can add text over anything. So if you didn't want this to say who is Ella Fitzgerald, you can add a text box. You can put whatever you want in here and then you can fill that background so that no one has to see anything else. Now, one big question I get is about copy versus view versus edit. So when you are sending this to your students, if you're in Google Classroom, which I'll show you in just a second, you're gonna wanna send a copy if they need to use anything. So the way that you do that is that you click on share. And right here, we're gonna look at this. This says anyone on the link can, and this says anyone on the internet can view. So I'm gonna copy that link. And now when I go it, well, that didn't work because I'm already in here, but if I went into a different account, then see, it says view only. So this works for some products, but if I need to edit anything like here where it says type, I'm not going to be able to type well. I'm typing, nothing's happening. So what you can do in that case, if you need students to be able to do something and you're sending it to them, is just come here and we're gonna delete this part where it says edit. And then I'm going to type in copy. Now it comes up with this. So the students will just click make a copy and then that way theirs does not affect yours. They can add all the stuff and nothing pops up on yours. Now, when you're presenting something, there's a difference between view and edit mode. I will typically put on this first page or sometimes on a page by itself, whether we want to be in edit mode or in present mode. When you're in present mode, you can't do everything. So that's why this is important. You can look, you can watch videos. See, you can watch videos. <laughs> first lady. Oh, keep going. But I can't type. See, when I click on type, then it just moves. And so that's not what we want. So if your students need to type or if they need to drag anything, you need to have them in edit mode. So this is edit mode. That just means you did not click present. Here, I can change things. I can also drag things. So like here, it says Ella was from New York. Can you find New York on the map? So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it up here to New York. I cannot do that when I am in present mode. Those are kind of the two main differences between the two. So if I click assignment, then you're gonna put a title, instructions with the instructions because the, they're kids and especially because they're little, I like to do it very clear like one, 
watch video. Two, complete PowerPoint. I don't know. Um, and then you can add things and create things. So when you create, you can create a new Google Doc, slide, sheet, drawing, or form for them. So this is like, okay, I need to create something new. If you already have something, like maybe you bought something off Teachers Pay Teachers or you made something, you can click here. You can add a YouTube video, a file, a link, or something from your Google Drive. So if I click Google Drive, then you can see here is all the stuff in my Google Drive. So I'm gonna click um, my new Chicka Chicka Boom Boom activity. And then this is what I wanna show you. Over here it says students can view file. So this is the magic. If you have like a presentation, you want it on students can view file. That means they cannot edit it, they cannot touch it, they can just watch it. If you click students can edit the file, that means that all of your students can edit that one file. So if you had like a group project, that would be what you would want. Then if you click make a copy for each student, now each individual student will get a copy of this and it'll show up in your assignments, I'll show you in a second, as like Rebecca Davis, chicka chicka boom boom, and it'll have each one individually. Over here, you can click whether you want all students or just some students, how many points, the due date, you wanna put a due date. I usually make everything due on like Friday or Saturday so that it's just nice and easy. If you have a topic, you can put that, and then if you have a rubric, you can put that. You can assign, you can schedule, or you can save it as a draft. So we're just gonna click assign. So now when I click here, it'll show me the assignment. It'll tell me how many people it assigned it to so there's only one person in here and then how many people have turned it in and if I click view assignment then it shows you again the instructions and the student work oh. so if I click here on the side then it shows up here no grade because I haven't graded it yet and then when I click on it then it'll show me the full assignment so it does this automatically every single student gets a copy of it and then you'll see here it'll show you who um, each person's copy of it and then you can check it so like for this one i would check to make sure this should be uh meet you at the top okay so that's what it should look like from the assigned student if it is correct so again, if your students need to be able to move anything like on this where they need to type or they need to drag things, then you will need to make sure that they have access to edit it. So you will want to make a copy or you will want to make a copy in Google Classroom or whatever you're using. My school uses its learning and we can also do that there. So you'll just change the settings to say, make a copy for each student. Now, a couple of other things that you can do, if for some reason you wanted two of these slides or maybe you liked these questions, but you wanted more questions and you wanted them to look the same, you can copy and paste this slide. So we can come over here and do make, and we're gonna not do that one. <laughs> you can come over here and you can click control and then duplicate slide. And then that will make two of them. Or you can delete them like that. If you don't like this slide, you can always delete it. I would suggest if you're going to adjust the product that you make a copy for yourself so that you have one that's the original. So if you ever wanna go back and get any of those things again, it's easy to find. Now, one other little hack you can do if you're assigning this to your students and they need to do something, then I like to give them just one slide and I like to watch them as they're doing it. So I would pick a slide, usually I'll pick, oh, which one should we pick? I got rhythm, that one's fun. Um, but usually I'll pick like this slide. So at the end, I will send them this. Now, here's the magic. We're gonna click file, make a copy selected slides change it to whatever you want click okay and then you're gonna get just that slide now obviously you can add more slides you can even come back and if i wanted them to do this one too i can copy and paste it over here oh, 
and paste it over here, but I don't want to do that. What I want is I want all of the kids to be in this one file. So this is really, really great for music teachers because it keeps classes together. So I can see the whole Miss Miller's third grade class at one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a text box up here. I'm going to make it an obnoxious color. That's where they're going to put their name. And then I am going to make a whole bunch of these. Now I'm going to click share. I'm going to click anyone can edit. And then I'm going to copy that link and I will give that link to the kids. This I use all of the time on Zoom. It is so helpful because then I can just say, okay, Alea, you're going to be on slide number one. So Alea comes, she puts her name on slide number one, she does it. And then I'll have it James on slide number two. And so I can just see everything. I can see it as they're working, which is really nice because then I can sit here and be like, huh, how come this person doesn't have anything on their slide? <laughs> or I can kind of see when they need help and different things like that. And then again, it makes it grading really easy because they're just all in one. So that's a little hack for you there. Um, another thing that is really helpful is to make folders in your Google Drive. So if you have some things that you're using a lot, then you can make a folder by just coming up here and clicking new and then folder. This will upload a folder from your computer. We just want to click folder and then you can make folders of anything. So like I have a folder for my digital board games and for my virtual field trips and it just makes life so much easier when I am looking for products or activities that my kiddos need to do as opposed to just like scrolling through this endless sea of Google resources because it gets to be a lot. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is if you are not a Google Slides fan, a couple of things you can do. You can actually come here to file and then come to download and you can download this as a PowerPoint, as a PDF, as images. So you can download just this one slide as an image. It does do those like one slide at a time. So just a heads up, um, I wouldn't suggest doing that for the whole um, Google Slides resource because it's just going to do like this slide and then I'd have to go to slide three and do it that way. But you can download it as a PowerPoint or as a PDF. So I know like my learning management system is called It's Learning and it definitely favors PowerPoint over Google. And for a while it wasn't working with Google at all, which was just a glitch. And so I would often do this where I would make something in Google Slides and then I would come and download it as a PowerPoint in order to make sure that my kids could use it as best as possible. And when you do that, they can still do all the dragging, they can still do all of the typing and all of those different little things so do be aware of that. If you do it as a PDF, then it's just going to be the slides and you will not have access to all of the activity parts of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any more Google Slides tips for like how to use them, leave them in the comments. I will link all of the products that I have used in the description so that you can check those out. And I will also leave that freebie so that you can try things out with the free one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.